it's happening again. There's a new Stephen King book coming out in 2024. And finally, we've got some details. Let's explore them. This is You Like It Darker, everything we know so far. Hi everyone, I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram. This is a place where I talk to you about all things Stephen King. And this is something of a bonus video because we finally have some details of the new Stephen King collection that's gonna come out in 2024. It's called You Like It Darker. It contains 12 short stories. And over the course of this video, I'm gonna tell you the titles of those stories. We're gonna look at the covers for the US and the UK edition. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about those stories and I'm gonna read you an excerpt from one of the stories contained in You Like It Darker. I'm also gonna remind you of the release date, 21st of May, 2024. I say remind you, I haven't actually mentioned it in the story, but that was part of the news this week. 21st of May, 2024, pre-orders ready to go right now so you can go and check out your favorite bookstore, whether it's the big one online or whether it's the little one in your town and get those pre-orders in. Now. Before we jump into everything we know about You Like It Darker, just a couple of very quick plugs for things I do. I will keep them brief because I know that's what people prefer. Basically everything's in the description. So I've written a Stephen King quiz book, uh, which I'm gonna have to update very, very soon because there's been lots more books since I published it, but you can get that. I've also published some fiction. I have a newsletter and there's a podcast that you can check out here and in podcast platforms where I talk to indie horror authors called The Constant Writers. Links to everything is in the description below. Okay, let's crack on with You Like It Darker. So before we jump into the meat of this, just a little bit about where we were before this week's news with You Like It Darker. We knew this was happening and we knew it was coming out in 2024. King revealed it during an interview with the Talking Scared podcast, which came out around the time Holly came out. And he mentioned in there that it was gonna feature the story Rattlesnakes, which as he revealed on the Losers Club podcast back in 2022, I think, possibly 2021, can't remember. What is time? It's irrelevant. But Rattlesnakes is a sequel to Cujo of sorts. It is set in the same world as Cujo. And you stick around in this video, or if you skip ahead to the time point in the description, you can hear an excerpt from Rattlesnakes in this very video. So we knew this was happening, but we didn't really have many details. And then this weekend just gone, so the first weekend of November 2023, we saw things happening. We saw the UK cover appear on Amazon and a bit of a, a synopsis. And then we saw the US cover appear. And then finally, we got this first batch of details, which I'm gonna take you through in this video. So yeah, we knew it was coming and now we've got some more details and we've got that release date, 21st of May, 2024, which is really exciting and suggests to me, particularly in a year which is the 50th anniversary of King's first published book, Carrie, that suggests we might get more than one book in 2024, which is very exciting. But anyway, like I said, let's go through a few things. So we'll look at the covers. We'll go through the table of contents. We'll talk a little bit about what these stories are. We'll go through that extract, that excerpt from Rattlesnakes, and then, hey, maybe I'll offer a few final thoughts at the end. Does that sound good? Okay, here's You Like It Darker, everything we know so far. Okay then, let's start with the covers. That's what kind of sparked this rush of news over the last few days. And let's start with the UK cover, which is the one I will be picking up. As you can see, it's interesting, I guess. It's taken a lot of slack online from what I've seen. People really don't seem to like this one very much at all. I don't mind it. I think the colors are a bit garish and funky. The illustration is kind of intriguing. Like why is there the silhouette of some people behind what should be deck chairs and clearly a Florida setting. I get the sense that a lot of these stories might have been written when King was in Florida. So that's the UK edition, quite neon, quite loud, doesn't really give much away at all. And then we've got the US edition, which again gives strong Florida vibes and is a bit more subtle. At first you think, ah, oh, it's like a little key in Florida with palm trees on. But then you notice that that key is actually in the shape of an alligator, which immediately suggests to me that the story Laurie is going to be in here, which he published a couple of years ago, he published on his website. And looking at the table of contents, spoiler alert, Laurie is in here. That is a story involving an alligator. We'll get to that. Um, so initially I liked the UK cover a little bit more, but actually the more I look at the US one, I think it's a bit more sophisticated. To be honest, I'm not mad about either. 
But anyway, let me know what you think. Which is your favourite of these two covers? And if you could choose, which one would you pick up? Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty of this then. So we know May 21st, 2024, You Like It Darker, a collection of 12 stories is going to drop. It's Stephen King's 712th book. I exaggerate slightly, but only slightly. And it's going to be the first new piece of King work in the year that celebrates 50 years since his first piece of work, which is very, very exciting. And it's his first short story collection. We're saying short stories rather than novellas. It's his first short story collection since 2015's Bazaar of Bad Dreams. That's a nine year gap, which I think off the top of my head is the joint longest we've waited between short story collections, because I think between Nightmares and Dreamscapes and Everything's Eventual was also a nine year gap. So very, very exciting. I love me a short story collection and I'm pretty sure you guys do too. So how about we take a look at the table of contents and check out which 12 stories we're getting. And you know, if you want to, you can compare and contrast with my prediction for the next Stephen King collection that I made earlier in 2023. Wonder how many of the stuff I selected there have made this list. Let's have a look, shall we? So most of the information I'm going through for this video is taken from an article on Entertainment Weekly, which I'll link in the description and you can check out yourself. But it's thanks to them that we've got everything. So let's dig into this list of stories. So the 12 stories we've got are Two Talented Bastids. And that's a new story. We've got The Fifth Step and Willie the Weirdo, which have both been published previously. The Fifth Step was published possibly even on Entertainment Weekly. It was on a, a magazine's website. It's a story about addiction, about recovery, with some wildly creepy, disturbing stuff happening. And Willie the Weirdo, I've not read Willie the Weirdo yet. That's a story that was initially published in French and then published in English, I think earlier this year, in McSweeney's magazine, which I never got around to picking up because I had a feeling it would get dropped into a collection. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. That will be a new read for me, even though it's not new to the world. Then we do have another new story, Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream, which we'll come to in a moment. Then there's Finn, which I reviewed when Finn came out, back when it was published on Scribd last year. Fun little story. You can check out my spoiler-free review of Finn, but it's nice to see that appearing in a book rather than just on a digital platform. Then we've got a couple more that we've seen before. So On Slide In Road, that was also published on a magazine website, possibly Entertainment Weekly. I should have checked this out beforehand, but I forgot. That's about basically not fucking with some old guys. We've got Red Screen, which was a charity release initially, an ebook only charity release from last year, maybe even 2021. Um, it's creepy. I liked it. It's, it's short, sharp and nasty, and it did a lot of good raising money for charity. Then we've got The Turbulence Expert, which was King's contribution to Flight or Fright, which he co-edited with Bev Vincent. And that is a story about turbulence. And of course, Stephen King doesn't like flying. So that's an interesting one to check out. I need to pull this curtain a little bit. Hmm. Maybe. Who knows? Then we've got Laurie, which I mentioned earlier, which was published for free on Stephen King's website back in whew, a while ago now, possibly even pre-COVID. I can't even remember. But I've had it as a PDF on my on my computer for a while, read it a couple of times. It's about an old guy whose sister gets him a dog, a puppy to keep him company. He's out walking the dog in Florida and encounters a big old gator, which is where the American cover comes from. And it's quite a fun little story. Then we have Rattlesnakes, which is the one that the Losers Club got the exclusive on. That's the one set in the world of Cujo. It's a sequel to Cujo, and I'll give you a bit more about that in a moment. And then another, so that's a new one. And then two more new ones to finish. We've got The Dreamers and we've got The Answer Man. So 12 stories and what, five of them we've not seen before. And I mean, Willie the Weirdo is not the easiest one to track down either. Um, so yeah, really, really excited. Almost half of this collection, and for me, because I haven't read Willie the Weirdo, half of this collection is going to be brand new. And I'm looking forward to rereading the other ones as well. So let's go into a little bit more detail on those new stories. So this is all taken from very brief synopses from the Entertainment Weekly article, but just to give you a flavor of what these new stories are about, and hopefully get you a little bit excited about them. So let's start off with Rattlesnakes, which is that sequel to Cujo. 
and that one is listed as being a story in which a grieving widower travels to Florida for respite and instead receives an unexpected inheritance with major strings attached. Now we'll get a little bit more about this when I read the excerpt from Rattlesnakes in a moment, but this is obviously the sequel to Cujo. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see what happened post Cujo. As you've seen the excerpt, we're following Vic Trenton. Very excited to know what the rest of his life panned out like after the tragic events of Cujo. So that's what we're getting in Rattlesnakes. No hint there as to why it's called Rattlesnakes. Is it going to be a rabid rattlesnake? Maybe we'll find out in a little bit. Other new stories then. We've got two talented bastids, which explores, this article says, the long hidden secret of how the eponymous gentleman, the two talented bastids, got their skills. So that to me, it was a bit back mini. King getting some old guys reminiscing about shit they did in the past. He's good at that sort of stuff. And it sounds like these guys are going to be nasty bastards. So, yeah, bit back, Mini. I'm in. Count me in. I'm ready for this. Let's put it that way. So Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream is about a brief and unprecedented psychic flash that upends dozens of lives. Yeah, bring it on. That sounds great. Sounds like it could be short, sharp, and shocking as well, which is good. That's what I want from a Stephen King short story. I want something nasty. I want something to make you go, bam, that was cool. Another new one, we've got The Dreamers. So in that one, we've got a taciturn Vietnam vet answers a job ad and learns that there are some corners of the universe best left unexplored. So there's a few things here. I mean, Vietnam vets, we get King doing that in Hearts in Atlantis and doing it brilliantly. I mean, honestly, that's some of his best writing in that book. So I'm definitely down for some of that. And some corners of the universe, other worlds than these? Is there going to be a tower connection in this one, like in Hearts and Atlantis? Possibly, possibly. And then the last new one is The Answer Man, which this story says it asks if prescience is good luck or bad and reminds us that a life marked by unbearable tragedy can still be meaningful. Now we've seen King musing on loss, on grief, on death in books like Pet Cemetery before, and he does it wonderfully so i'm definitely down for more of that and this one feels like quite a meditative story like it's giving me albeit based off one sentence but it's giving me vibes of like woman in the room last rung on the ladder those kinds of really deep impactful stories that might be short in terms of page counts but will stick with you for a long time and really get under your skin so i mean obviously i'm excited it's new stephen king but i'm very excited about all of the synopses for these new stories um so the new ones, Rattlesnakes, Two Talented Bastards, Danny Cochran's Bad Dream, The Dreamers, and The Answer Man. And hey, let me know which one you're most excited about. And I tell you what, before we get on to the excerpt from Rattlesnakes, let's just run through these titles again. So in You Like It Darker, which is coming out 21st of May, 2024, get your pre-orders in now. We've got Two Talented Bastards, New Story, Fifth Step, previously published, Willie the Weirdo, previously published, Danny Cochran's Bad Dream, New Story, Finn, an onslaught in road, red screen, the turbulence experiment, and lorry, all previously published, and then rattlesnakes, the dreamers, and the answer man, all brand new stories. It's really exciting. Which one are you most intrigued by? Let me know in the comments. Okay, before I leave you, I'm going to go through this excerpt from Rattlesnakes, which is carried in the Entertainment Weekly article. I'm just going to read it for you and then offer a few thoughts at the end, and then we'll wrap this up. And get out and maybe go and do our pre-orders so this is an excerpt from rattlesnakes sequel to cujo and very clearly marked at the top of this excerpt is july to august 2020 that's when this one is set um so bear that in mind but hey let's get into the excerpt so i wasn't surprised when i saw the elderly woman pushing the double stroller with the empty seats i had been forewarned this was on rattlesnake road which winds the four mile length of rattlesnake key on the florida gulf coast houses and condos to the south a few McMansions at the north end. There's a blind curve half a mile from Greg Ackerman's McMansion where I was staying that summer, bouncing around like the last pea in an oversized camp. Tangled undergrowth higher than my head, and I'm 6'4", flanked the road, seeming to press in and make what was narrow to begin with even narrower. The curve was marked on either side by fluorescent green plastic kids, each bearing the warning, slow, children at play. I was walking, and at the age of 72, in the simmering heat of a July morning, I was going plenty slow. My plan was to walk to the swing gate, which divides the private part of the road from the part the county maintains, then go back to Greg's house. 
I was already wondering if I'd bitten off more than I could chew. I hadn't been entirely sure Greg wasn't putting me on about Mrs. Bell, but here she was, and pushing her oversized stroller toward me. One of the wheels had a squeak and could have used some oil. She was wearing baggy shorts, sandals with knee-length socks, and a big blue sun hat. She stopped, and I remembered Greg asking me if her problem, that's what he called it, would give me a problem. I said it wouldn't, but now I wondered. Hello, I think you must be Mrs. Bell. My name is Vic Trenton. I'm staying at Greg's house for a while. A friend of Greg's? How nice. An old friend? We worked in the same Boston ad agency. I was a copywriter and he... Pictures and layout. I know, before he made the big bucks. She pushed the double pram closer, but not too close. Any friend of Greg's, so on and so forth. It's a pleasure to meet you. Since we're going to be neighbours for as long as you'll be here, please call me Alita. Or Ali, if you like. Are you okay? No sign of this new flu? I'm okay. No cough, no fever. I assume you are too. I am, which is good, as old as I am, and with a few of the usual old person medical issues. One of the few nice things about being here in the summer is how most people clear out. I saw on the news this morning that Dr. Fulci, not sure if that's pronounced correctly, is saying there could be 100,000 new cases every day. Can you believe that? I told her I had seen the same thing. Did you come here to get away from it? No, I needed some time off and the place was offered to me, so I took it. That was far from the whole story. I think you're a little crazy to be vacationing in this part of the world during the summer, Mr. Trenton. According to Greg, you're the one who's crazy, I thought. And judging by the stroller you're wheeling around, he wasn't wrong. Vic, please, I said, since we're neighbours. And that's the excerpt we get. So, a few things in here. Obviously, it's Vic Trenton, as I mentioned earlier. The surviving husband from the story of Cujo. And we're catching up with him as a 72-year-old. I am very keen to know what went on in his life after the tragic events at the end of Cujo. Did his marriage survive? Did he stay in Maine? He obviously stayed in the ad agency for a bit, but yeah, fascinated to know what was going on. And we've got this interesting character, Ali, who is pushing an empty buggy around, which of course is why Vic's friend Greg is perhaps worried that that might trigger something for Vic, because obviously potentially there's loss of children for Ali as well as for Vic. Um, and Ali is obviously badged as being crazy, but that probably means she's not crazy. That probably means she's got something dark going on. So I'm very interested there. I think we also get the key to the rattlesnake story. It's not necessarily a rabid snake, but it's Rattlesnake Road on Rattlesnake Key. So something clearly is going to happen either on this key or on this road. So that one perhaps answers that. Maybe we will see some rattlesnakes as well. Um, I hope not. I don't like snakes. Um, we also get the name Ackerman, which makes me think of Ackerman's Field in N. Nice little bit of um, King's World coming through there. And what else have we got? Well, not loads, really. We just get this set up between Old Vic and Ali. Um, oh, and we get COVID, of course. Set in 2020, talking about this new flu. King obviously hasn't had enough of talking about COVID in Holly. So all of you folk who enjoyed those parts in Holly are clearly going to love this bit. But yeah, Vic has come down to Florida to get away from it all. He's made a new friend on a walk. Do McKee vibes, maybe. Um, and obviously there's loads more to unpack and be revealed here because surely we're going to find out a bit more about what happened to the Trentons post Cujo and hey are we going to see a rabid dog are we going to see a rabid snake who knows but colour me intrigued absolutely colour me intrigued and let me know what you think in the comments so there we go that is everything we know so far about You Like It Darker which will be released on the 21st of May 2024 and contain 12 stories five of them brand new and most of the others have been published elsewhere but not necessarily the easiest to track down so a great way to kick off the year where we celebrate 50 years of King being a published author like I said earlier I reckon we're going to get more than one book next year but I'm so excited to get a short story collection in this special year and from the synopses of all of those that we've looked through and from the excerpt of Rattlesnakes feels like we're going to be dealing with a collection of bangers here so I'm very very excited let me know what you think in the comments and do come back soon when I'll be going back onto the movies and adaptations. And hey, check out the link in the description for my Stephen King quiz book, for my newsletter, my fiction, constant writers podcast, my letterbox profile, all of those kind of things. But thank you for checking this out. If this is your first time here, hey, there's loads of Stephen King content here, so do click around and maybe consider subscribing. But otherwise, let's go and get our pre-orders in. Let's get excited about You Like It Darker and then let's temper that excitement a bit because we've still got to wait until May. But it's good, isn't it? More New King. I'm always happy for New King. I hope he never stops. And yeah, that's
that's everything we know so far about you like it darker